I've used Skylon Numina Neo for many years and continue to choose it as my primary photo editing software. It provides a robust set of tools that handle each step of post-processing with accuracy. Its user-friendly design makes editing both simple and enjoyable, while its creative features offer plenty of possibilities for artistic expression. Skylum has constantly added new tools over the years. In this video I will analyze all the new features for 2025. Some added a few months ago with the spring release, and others to be added in November. A major new feature of the Spring Update is the Auto Adjust button in the Develop panel. This tool performs a global exposure adjustment of an image. We open the Develop panel and click on the Auto Adjust button. The software analyzes the image and proposes a few adjustments to improve the exposure. The tools involved are always the same, the sliders exposure, highlight, shadows and occasionally smart contrast. Sometimes the tool curves is used to lift the highlights, but this is not the case here. The slider for the white balance and the settings for the black and white points are not affected. A before and after view is available via the eye icon next to develop. This auto adjustment tool is often a good starting point for further adjustments. The image is not an easy one, as it was shot in the direction of the sun, which is just right of the frame. It is a very hazy day, some contrast must be restored, as shown by the histogram. This is a chance to show you some of the excellent Luminar Neos tools that can be used on these occasions. Enhance is an AE based tool that often does a very good job of restoring the correct luminosity with the slider accent, while the one below improves the structure of the sky. There are several ways to adjust the contrast. One of them is the slider Smart Contrast in the Develop panel. We can also set the black and white points or use the curves. Then we can adjust the white balance with the temperature and tint sliders in the control panel. The tool structure adds detail to the vegetation and architectural features. It must be used subtly. In this case, a very gentle amount improves the rendition, although others may disagree. The relight tool is often used when images contain both the sky and elements on the ground allowing for independent adjustments to the brightness of element in the foreground and background. We can also modify the depth of the adjustment. In the panel landscape, we can often improve the structure of the sky and the sea via the slider the heights. In this case, the elements in the foreground already have enough contrast, so I prefer to use a linear mask to apply the adjustment only to the sky and the sea. On this hazy summer day, it is difficult to add interest to the sky, so this image is a good candidate for a sky replacement. There is a wide choice with all sorts of cloud patterns and several sliders to blend the sky with the foreground. This image contains several annoying antennas. We can get easily rid of them using the Erase tool but it is best to use it at the end of the process, otherwise further adjustment may introduce artifacts. A final touch is Dodge and Burn, to slightly lighten or darken part of the foreground, to add interest to the scene. This is the image before and after the adjustments. In the same update, the tool Atmosphere has been improved. This tool can add fog, layer fog, mist and haze to a scene. As we add fog with a mount slider, the algorithm recognizes the monastery in the foreground and keeps the fog behind it with improved depth mapping. We can then play with the depth slider to bring the fog closer to the camera and the lightness one to modify the luminosity of the effect. 
Other new features of the Spring update include some extra options for exporting images and the possibility of clearing the cache when running out of storage space. The upcoming update of Luminar Neo will contain the first phase of what Skylum calls the Luminar Ecosystem, a multi-device editing environment. Images edited on a mobile phone or tablet are automatically saved to the cloud. They will be available when switching to a computer for further post-processing for a seamless uninterrupted flow. With this update, the opposite route will not be available, as edit made on a computer will not be accessible on mobile devices. However, according to the Luminar website, the reverse workflow from computer to smartphone will be added in the future. The ecosystem will also include web galleries, allowing users to easily share edited images with their friends or clients, or publish them online. The AI-based restoration tool will analyze old damaged photos to bring them back to life with just one click removing scratches, restoring missing details, and adding natural colors. It can be a fast and effortless way to restore an archive of old images. Several sliders will be available to fine-tune the adjustment. Another interesting upcoming tool is Volume, which, according to the Skylum website, adds depth and dimension to images, enhances light and shadow to create bold contrast and a sculpted look. It could be a companion to the excellent Enhance tool, working in pairs for a good starting point in the editing process. I can't wait to try these new tools. Another new functionality will be the AI Assistant, which is supposed to analyze the images, recommend optimal enhancements, and help find the right tools. It will probably be aimed mainly at beginners. There are several price options and occasionally special offers. You will find the updated price for the different plans in the description below, together with a 10% discount coupon with the code VICVIDEOPIC. It is an affiliate link, so I get a small commission in case of purchase, which helps the channel go. Click on this link to watch my video about the main functionalities of Luminar Neo. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.